Hi everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Shachal. I'm uh, a work at Starkware. I'm uh, one of the co-inventors of Cairo, and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, Sierra. Um, okay, first of all, what is Sierra? Um, it's part of the new Cairo One compilation stack. It's an intermediate presentation. The, f the flow uh, that was at Cairo Zero is that you just have some high level syntax in Cairo Zero and compiles directly to Cairo Assembly. Uh, the new flow in Cairo 1.0 is that the first the compilation is compiled to Sierra, a, a safe intermediate representation, and then the Sierra is uh, later it's deployed to Starknet and there, there it's compiled down to Cairo Assembly. And I'll, I'll explain a, a bit why we chose this and what the, the, the benefits. Point to note that the Sierra is a, like, it's a bit low level. It's like the furthest low level we, we could get. So you're not supposed to program in Sierra, but it's supposed to be like the artifact of the compilation from Cairo 1. All right, so uh, a bit about the motivation of why we have Sierra. Um, previously in Cairo 0, uh, this is how a transaction flow occurs. First, the developer writes a contract in Cairo. Uh, the compiled, compiles down to Cairo assembly, to CASM. And then the de developer deploys this uh, CASM contract to Starknet. Uh, this is an example uh, contract that could be written with a, let's say, a function called deposit. It gets an amount to deposit and it verifies that uh, you have enough balance to deposit. This code gets compiled to CASM, the second square, and then deployed to Starknet. Uh, now, uh, after it is deployed, a user wants to call this function deposit. So he signs a transaction, a transaction asks some sequencer on the uh, Starknet network to include this transaction in a block. The sequencer runs this transaction uh, in hopes of getting the user's fees. When he, he signed the transaction, he said he's willing to give this and this fee for a sequencer to include it. Uh, and the sequencer runs it and is supposed to get some of this fee. After it, it is included, it, it gets to approval and a proof is generated of this entire block includes this transaction. And when it's included in, this block is included in Starknet, the sequencer profits some of this fee. But uh, there is also a not very happy flow. Uh, the user tries to deposit more money than the, than, uh, the balance he has. Uh, so, when the sequencer tries to run it, if you see below, the assert we have uh, fails because uh, it didn't have enough uh, money. So uh, the run fails on this assert and the transaction is not included in a block. The sequencer can't get his money because, uh, because uh, in Cairo you can't prove invalid things, which is good. Uh, but what happens here is that the sequencer did work for nothing, which is a problem. A uh, problem, uh, all, all kinds of uh, reasons. Uh, I'll explain in a bit, but for example, it's uh, some sort of denial of service vector. Today in StarCraft, we are dealing uh, with it with some kind of an economical uh, mechanism, but, but uh, uh, we can do better. In Ethereum, for example, a failed transaction is actually included in a block, even though it's failed, but it's included as reverted, which means state changes don't happen, but free collections still happen. Um, and we would like to have something similar in StarkNet. All right, so the problem here is invalid Cairo runs, Cairo runs that, that fail. Well, uh, Cairo has this property that only valid statements can be proven, which is a blessing and a curse. It's good, that is the purpose of Cairo, so you can't prove bad stuff, you can't prove il uh, invalid stuff. So people can't steal your money, so you can deposit maybe more money than you have. But the downside 
is, uh, for example, a denial of service issue. Uh, people can bombard you with this invalid transaction, bombard the sequencer, and sequencer, uh, and they won't have any uh, repercussions, uh, any consequences, consequences for this thing, and uh, the sequencer just uh, not be able to respond. Uh, for those who uh, maybe uh, know a bit more, uh, uh, one other uh, disadvantage is, is for an anti-censorship mechanism that could be implemented. Uh, for example, if we want uh, users to be able to put their transaction on L1 and say, hey, you got to put this transaction in, otherwise I'll uh, say you are censoring me and maybe this, the uh, stockment will uh, freeze uh, in response. But we can't really do this here because if user posts a transaction I, I, and no one de decides to include it, I can't know if it's because they're just censoring me or because transaction is actually invalid. So I can dis distinguish between these, these two uh, cases. So it's also a problem. So what are actually our uh, requirements here from uh, this proof system? Well, the first requirement is completeness. This means an honest prover should always be able to prove a run, any run, even, even one that supposedly failed or is an invalid. Uh, even because we want to include invalid runs and collect their fees, even if we don't do any state changes. The other requirement is soundness. A prover must not be able to reject good runs. And um, yeah, that makes uh, that pretty clear, I think. Right, so uh, what is the solution suggested here? It's called Sierra. The approach is safety by construction. Well, let's start with the, the basic idea. Uh, we want the user to write branching code instead of failing code. So, for example, instead of writing assert amount is less than balance, I'll do an if instead. If amount is more than balance, I'll return false. And the entry point will just return bool saying if it's valid or invalid. And in response, the operating system of StarkNet would know if it's valid and then it should apply the state updates or invalid and not apply the state updates, but still collect fees. So you know, if every user would have written his code in, in this way, uh, then maybe it would be better, but, but we can't really trust users to do this. Right? Users can't even trust themselves to do this. Um, all right, so what we actually want to do is uh, somehow enforce on StarkNet that there won't be any failing code in any contract deployed anywhere. Uh, so we want to only allow uh, use, uh, developers to deploy code that cannot fail. How can we make sure their code has no failure flows? Uh, we uphold this by introducing this intermediate representation, uh, which we call Sierra. You can see safe intermediate representation and uh, with uh, carefully chosen letters. Um, yeah, Sierra, uh, the idea is that it doesn't have any failing semantics inside. So it's safe by construction. Only, only introduce things inside this representation that, that don't fail ever. Uh, and this will later compile down to Cosm, which means the generate Cosm also can't fail ever by constructions because that's how we construct it from non-failing semantics. Um, so this is the idea to, uh, to make sure uh, nothing on StarkNet can fail. So how we, do we design this intermediate representation that cannot fail? Well, first of all, let's uh, have a brief overview of what actually can fail in Cairo Zero. What are, what can be illegal and cause not something to not be provable. First, we have uh, dereferencing illegal addresses, um, which is bad. We have undefined opcodes. We have uh, asserts that are wrong. For example, assert one equals two. Um, but more, uh, more things that can fail are uh, multiple writes to the same address. Uh, Cairo 
memory is immutable. So you cannot write different values to the same address. You can't overwrite things. You can only write once. So if you write the same address, it's, it's bad. Uh, another particular case of uh, assert is arrays. There is uh, some problem of multiple appends I'll talk about in a second. Um, but basically, if you take an array and you append value it to it, and then you try to append to this old instance of the array, both will try to append to the same position in memory, and again, we'll have a failure because trying to write to the same position in memory. Uh, another issue is uh, long runs. Uh, I call it long runs. Basically, when we have like transactions that run and runs and runs and runs, and we don't know if it's going to stop or it's in an infinite loop. So this is also an issue. So the design goals of Sierra is to solve this, to be safe. We also want an efficient compilation from Sierra to Cosm because this might later be done in the operating system itself and it might be expensive. Uh, so we want it to be efficient. Obviously we want it to be simple and we want it to have low overhead because we don't want our generated Cosm to be expensive, to have overhead, to have runtime. We want it to be uh, as, low, as efficient as possible. This is one supposed to be one of the uh, uh, main uh, features of Cairo, that it's fast and scalable, and we want to keep it that way. All right. So first of all, how can we solve the uh, uh, invalid references to make them valid? Uh, first of all, we still want to enable low-level dereferences, not just simulate it, maybe in a dict or some way, because that will have overhead, and we want low overhead. So we want to uh, allow the reference somehow. So let's look at this uh, simple uh, example. We have this struct A that has a pointer to B, B has a pointer to C, C has some felt. And when we start with A, we can do reference three times because we get C, but we can do reference four times, this is invalid. So we, we, that means Sierra needs some more information regarding instances and places of memory. It specifically needs some type system to, so we can describe that A is a pointer to, a pointer to, a pointer to a felt. So it will know to allow only three references, not four. So we need some type system in this representation. Uh, and now we can uh, introduce this uh, uh, type called box. Uh, a box type is a pointer to, supposed to be always a pointer to a valid instance. And the only functions we allow on box are these two. Box new, which will be the only way to create boxes, just taking some value and it returns box, it's pointer uh, in a way. And then we have the box deref, which takes this pointer and returns t. And it's important to note that this function cannot fail because the only way to create box is using valid addresses of types t because this is, this is the, this function is the only way to create boxes. So uh, this is a way to, to enforce safety by construction. The only way, uh, yeah. you only dereference, dereference things that we know that are initialized valid instances. Uh, and what will happen in the example before, which you look like this now, is the compiler from Sierra to Cosm uh, we'll allow the referencing three times. You say, ha, the type here is felt. Uh, and, uh, and when I try to do reference again, I will get a compilation error, not a runtime error, not a failed proof. The developer would not be able to deploy his code because his code has a compilation error. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so now what about the array append issue? Uh, as I mentioned before, this is an example of the same append array problem. Uh, in Cairo 0, let's say I have uh, this uh, array A, uh, allocate, and I try to do first append uh, of the value 0. This is how it looks like in Cairo 0. It's good. I append again to A plus 1, the value 1, it's good. And now I try to append like, to the same address, A plus 1, instead. And this is like invalid and asserts two different values and this is an error and it covers zero it, this is the run will fail so what we want to do here is introduce a new type called the array t type it has an array append and what it does it gets the old pointer to the array and the new value and it writes that value and returns the uh, 
incremented pointer. So if I gave it the pointer A, it will return A plus one. If I get A plus one, it will return A plus two. And now, what we actually need to make sure is that no one reuses old instances of our array. How do we do that? Using a linear type system. Uh, definition from Wikipedia. Uh, linear types correspond to linear langu language, uh, linear logic. They ensure that objects are used exactly once. That means we can, if we implement a linear type system in Sierra, it means values can't be used more than once. The compiler will check it. So how this uh, example look like in Sierra? First, we'll define a new array. And uh, then if we call append on this instance, we get a new, uh, a new instance B. Append again, get new instance C. And if we try to append to B, the old instance, we'll get compilation error. Again, not runtime error, not fail proof, uh, just a compilation error and the developer won't be able to deploy his code. So we are making sure everything is safe. Um, and what about other objects that it's okay to use multiple types like felt or any other simple uh, object? We introduce a duplicating function called dupe. It, it, it gets a value and returns two values. So you can use the first one and still have the second to do other things, possibly more dupes. Uh, yeah. um, and we implement them only for things that are safe to duplicate. Usually uh, uh, just things don't con contain array or dict. Okay, now a dictionary also has a similar uh, prob uh, problem with multiple pens like arrays, so we do the same thing on it. We have dict new, and we have uh, dict get that increments a pointer. Uh, and dicts have another issue of soundness. In Carol Zero, you must remember to call squash dict on the array. It's some sort of finalizing the dict. You must do it, otherwise your program is not sound. Uh, so we, we don't want to allow users to do these bad things. We don't, don't want Sierra code to allow this uh, unsafe pattern. So instead, we force them to finalize the dict. Again, linear type system comes to the help here. Uh, another uh, requirement of linear types, if we remember from before, it actually that must be used exactly once. So if they are not used at all, it's also an issue. Uh, so we introduce the dict squash function that gets a dict and it does nothing. And this is actually the only way to get rid of uh, dictionary instances. So let's look at this example. If I have the, uh, let's say, if you draw a function, I initialize a dict, I get a value and I squash at the end, but I have this branch in the middle that does if blah, blah, then just return false. I want to revert. And I forgot here to call squash dict in this uh, val uh, doesn't equal one branch. And here I'll get a compilation error. It will say, hey, D is not used in this flow. You must use every value. And the only way I can get rid of this value is by calling dict squash. So I enforce this uh, soundness safety. Can exist. Uh, and again, uh, for other simple types, I introduce the drop function that just takes an instance and returns zero instances. Uh, okay, what about long runs? Is the one that may be in an infinite loop and maybe not. You can see Oriz talk about uh, uh, the halting on the halting problem talk, something like that. Okay, uh, one of the benefits we have here in Sierra is that we have a very lean. Uh, core that just checks type, uh, linear type system. On top of this uh, linear, uh, linear types core, we have a lot of extensions, the dig, the array, the box, all, all kinds of things. That makes it very easy to, to audit. You, we audit. You can audit this very small co core of, of things. And, and then uh, just uh, everything else is implemented on top of it. Uh, Okay, the, the analogy I like to, to think about is that Sierra to StarkNet is like EVM to Ethereum. It's sort of intermediate representation and instruction set that uh, is, is the semantics of this uh, blockchain. In Ethereum, the semantics are running EVM, and in StarkNet, the semantics are now running Sierra. 
and everything else is just an implementation of this. In Ethereum, we simulate EVM. In StarkNet, we compile Sierra to Kazem uh, one time when, when deploying. All right, conclusion. Linear types are very strong. We can force a lot of invariants using it, simple core, extendable, uh, and users now need to deploy Sierra code on StarkNet to make sure that the contracts are indeed safe. They don't deploy Cosm, they deploy Sierra. Future, I don't have time to talk about, you can ask me about later. Don't have any time for questions. Thank you very much. Yeah.